Welcome back to another episode in our template design series and this is one of my personal favourites. We're going to look at the Leaven today which is based on another very specific hole at London Lynx in Scotland and the Leaven is based on a couple of very key principles. Now it's typically a short to mid at most par 4 um, with the main features being a mound in front of the green and a cross hazard. We're going to look at how you can use this to make a really strategic and interesting hole which gives players a lot of choices off the tee. So the original Leaven hole featured a berm that went up the middle of the fairway and a mound in front of the green and it's pretty similar to this configuration except I believe the original had the berm running kind of this sort of direction. Now what that does is first of all off the tee it splits the fairway neatly into kind of four or more sections. You can take on a drive over this bit, um, you could take on a drive down here, you can take on a little bit of a layup this sort of side and then a layup over here as well. What makes this hole so good though is the way it's paired with the mounding in front of the green and this is one of the key features for any leaven hole because this mound here both creates blindness and it also as you can see from the slopes coming in impacts how the ball will react when it lands. Typically a shorter hole the reason for doing so is so that you're playing kind of a pitch shot or an awkward half wedge um, and also these options as we've discussed before with shorter holes you don't mind laying up so much because it's a viable choice you're not left with a three wood into this green complex which is a completely impossible shot so what I want to do first is look at well, for this pin which I think is our flavor pin it's like the most giving you the strategy the most for this hole where how can the different options really influence how this hole plays well, let's say we take on the drive over here First of all, the wind's going to make that pretty challenging today, but let's say we're landing here. Well, we're left with this sort of a look completely blind in towards this green and a pitch shot to a green that kind of gives you some help, but you're going to have to land it pretty carefully here and it's going to run sideways when you land. So probably not your ideal play, even if it's the most heroic carry. If we went over to here, you've obviously got to be thinking about landing rule just over so that you're not running into this bunker. So it's a very tight tee shot, I'd argue possibly tighter than this one. Um, what are the benefits? Well again, you're probably playing a pitch shot, um, given that the ball's rolling out and we're at 392 odd. But if we're looking at the angle you've got coming in, you're now not blind, you can see the flag, which is some really careful sculpting. And you're also not quite coming over this mound as much, you've got a bit of a backstop that you can play with, and landing the ball anywhere here and it'll all roll back towards the pin. So I'd say this is probably your ideal angle in at this pin, but it's also the, probably the toughest part of the fairway to hold. Which then leaves you with this layup, so to the left hand side here. That's going to leave you a full wedge, but again you're coming in at a less ideal angle at this pin and you are going to be blind. Whereas if we were to go down here, you're not going to be blind, you will see the tip of the flag over the mound. You will have a wedge in, and I'd say that's probably preferable to being up here. So in terms of ranking the order of shots and like where I'd like to be, I'd probably put this as first position A for me, position B, C, and then D. And in my head when I'm building a leaven hole, it's almost always going around those four fairway positions. Where do we find ourselves? What? And, and basically that relationship between blindness and green slopes, just um, for, particularly for this one pin. And I'd say the one pin hidden behind the mound is what you should base most of the hole off. Obviously there's some other pin positions, so you've probably got one down here, one here, and one back at the top on that tier. They're going to pose slightly different questions, and those pins may make you change your mind as to where you want to play. So it can be a hole that is pin dependent based on where you choose to play. 14 at Ferryland is another prime example of the Leaven as a template, and again with pin 1 we see it tucked right behind that mound on the left on the right hand side. What's interesting about this one is the mound actually hides a little bunker short as well which I don't think many people will end up in but it's an option. Now where I think this hole gets particularly tricky is the distance. It's a short par 4 but that by no means makes it easy. You've got that diagonal hazard which again splits the fairway into its distinct zones. You can carry this side up the high side here or lay up down here and you've got another couple of bunkers and camber and a tree line that is very close that are going to make you query exactly where you go and what the benefits are. 
um, as with the last time, is the distance. So if we're carrying over this side, we've got to be really careful. Or oh, 77 yards is probably a pitch shot, and we're likely running out even closer. So it's going to be very tough to leave a full wedge shot into this pin if you are carrying it. If you're not carrying it, well, you're looking at way back here, and you've got a surprisingly long wedge shot into a very tiny plateau at the top. There's then some further pins that will add interest, so big slope towards this back pin, which I think would be far friendlier. I think this is by a mile the toughest pin on this green. But where this got very dicey was if you did take on driver, you can see that the fairway is really rolling out and you can end up down there very, very easily. The next level we're going to look at is the 10th at Old Ainsdale, and this is one of the trickiest ones we've ever made. Now, at only 400 yards, it's not a long hole, but it's certainly packs its weight in terms of a punch. Um, you've got the diagonal hazard as with all of the others so you can cross this side downwind is definitely doable. You've got a bit more space out here although that leaven mounding will obscure your view from the, the right hand side of the fairway but if laying up that layup is not easy either. Firstly the fairway cambers pretty hard from left to right certainly the further down it you go um, and also it runs from short down towards the burn which means that actually if you want to lay up say down here you're going to have to really hug the fairway tight and land about here in order to do so. The Leven mound itself will obscure your view but it also does kind of feed in a little bit towards the front pins so you can't land it too much short if you're coming over the mound. In terms of the pins for the most part actually I think this area is probably the safest although it requires you to play pretty close to the burn if you ask carry it at 290 odd but with kind of 30 feet down you're looking at hitting a partial driver in order not to run through um, and that does open up the green somewhat particularly for these pins it also means you're not really hitting at this bunker as much um, and it's kind of a pin dependent hole I think for the front two for front two pins I'd probably want to be over on the right hand side rather for this pin I'd rather be on the right hand side I think that allows you a full wedge in and it takes the bunker a little bit out of play. If the pin is back right, I might look to try to sneak the ball down here because then you've got a full wedge and quite a lot of green in which to work land it. Um, if the pin is very much at the front, then you want to be over here as well, I would say, in order to avoid that 11 mounting and give you a little bit more space in which to land and roll the ball on in that little corridor. And then for this one, you can choose. I mean, either you've got a long wedge down the green or you might want to be over here in which case you're avoiding the bunker and kind of taking away this spine as well but for the most part I tended to lay up on this hole I think it's a risky drive um, and playing kind of a five wood odd and rolling down towards near here it's always going to leave you a gap wedge in at most a pitching wedge even for the back pins and it takes a lot of the major danger out but I think with this one what it shows is awkward positions of fairway land movement um, and a green complex that is just tricky. There's this narrow little shelf here which is what provides two very difficult pin positions and one awkward bunker um, and you're looking at a, a short par 4 that has quite a significant amount of difficulty. So next coming back to a hole that we've looked at before on the 13th on Strathlawn and we looked at this before on the Eden template where you can see there's this hard back to front green. In actual fact it's a bit of a combination between Eden and Leven so if we look at this diagonal hazard, well that's neatly bisecting the fairway as we've discussed into these four different sections. If you're playing out towards here, you start seeing the leaven aspect come in a bit more. You've got a bunker as that short front hazard, so the mounding, and you can see it runs just a bit beyond it, and that filters in towards the green complex. So an approach from this side towards that pin is going to be really difficult. Not impossible because you've got a bit of a backstop, but really difficult. Whereas if we compare that with the approach from the kind of tiger carry over to the left, it's a bit more manageable. It's shorter, you've got the slopes working with you, and you can kind of get around this bunker for some of the pins a little bit more. We're going to finish up on the 18th at Whiskey Trails by Energizer, which is our final example of 11 that we're going to look at. And this one's a little different in that it's a longer par 4, um, as befitting a closing hole, and it doesn't really have the diagonal nature of the the normal leaven hazard it does have a central bunker that effectively splits the fairway into four parts but it's really encouraging you to chase that camber down the left hand side 
there is still that mounding front right as you can see it feeding into the green as well which is going to encourage you to be as left as you possibly can and there's some pretty wild sloping on this green with a bit of a runoff at the back as well so leaping back onto the tee and you can see straight away that that longest driver is going to just get you up um, close to being able to hit the flat part of the fairway and hopefully running down here the further right you are the more you're coming in over that mound um, and towards that green and having to stop the ball relatively quickly in terms of what this does really well it's a great site for a hole and it's using the natural land as best it possibly can the big camber really comes into play um, and as you can see it's encouraging you to make the most of that the bunkers down here if you pull your tee shot and it's no easy up and down from there whilst that cent central hazard with where it is means that if you're hitting the longest driver and bouncing here you're potentially running into it so you may choose to stay short of it you may choose to go right you may choose to go left if it's downwind you might be able to chase it you're pretty much never going to be able to clear it though and i quite like that for really forcing you to make a decision rather than when the wind's with you you can just smash one long now it does give you a little bit of a helping hand if you go all the way out right in that there's that mound so if we're looking at the pin from this direction there's that mound just behind which might help you to stop it but for certain pins particularly in the back right you really want to be going down that left hand side so we'll try and hit the shot and see if we can make it that's about as good as I can do and hopefully this shows how you might use the land just to run left of that bunker exactly as designed <laughs> and then you lead to that preferential angle into a gorgeous skyline green and whilst it's still I mean it's not a short hole you still have a wedge in so it kind of fits the same thing um, and you can really see from this angle the kind of big hillside that is denoting the leaven so that's our leaven with its kind of key features the first one being the hazard that runs relatively diagonally even if it's not going all the way across the fairway forcing you to make a decision off the tee and dividing the fairway roughly into those four areas. The second one being that mounding front and right or front and left that's going to then influence you depending on where the pin is located. Around that though you've got a lot of other options in terms of how you set this up as you can see with different greens that we've looked at and it's a very versatile but useful template particularly on a short or mid par four. Hope that you found this helpful and see you again soon.